episode 303 on the 1st of September 2014. I am your host Stephen Layton. Welcome to In My Mug. Welcome to the news back in Stafford. So that was a little while back, way back at Hermitage Road, and this is in the future. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm in a great deal of pain today, so if I don't make a lot of sense during this bit, I'm sure I won't in the next bit. It's because I've pulled my back literally about an hour ago, and uh, I'm going to record this and I'm going to the hospital because I really am that bad. Uh, but anyway, we should get on with the news uh, because that's what Steve in the past said. So, Hermitage Road is our guest blend for this month. Um, as you always know, it won't be in my mug, and it is very, very delicious. Um, we talk about it a little bit in the tasting, and it's one that I would love you to try. And um, You should definitely go into Hermitage Road as well if you're in the area. It's a very, very cool shop. Um, I really like it there. Anyway, another coffee that won't be an in my mug, and it's a very exciting kind of project that I've had in the back of my mind for a little while. So some of you may know that I, uh, I also own a business in Ireland called 3FE, Third Floor Espresso, with my uh, business partner there, Colin Harmon. Um, and um, we've had this idea for a while that we quite fancied doing a collaboration roast between 3FE and has been here uh, in Blighty. So Ireland, Anglo-Irish collaboration, um, which, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool because we get to try some uh, different coffees, but also the roasters get to learn and to work with each other. So the plan is we're going to send Roland, you know, from Roland's Daft Fact. We're going to send him to Ireland, and he is going to roast with Simon, who is one of the roasters there, uh, part of the 3FE team. Um, and uh, they're going to roast the Finca La Lujon uh, Honey, that we had a couple of weeks ago on In My Mug, which is no longer available and has been, will only be available through 3FE. Um, and Roland and Simon are gonna roast that. And the other way, we're gonna get Monica from Ireland to come across and roast with Gary here in the UK. Um, and they will be roasting the La Lujon Natural selection, uh, which hasn't been on the website yet. It will be on the website after. Potentially could be an In My Mug in the future if you lot are very good. Um, but. I don't know, it depends. It depends how popular this is and how much we end up having left. So all this is gonna happen on the 24th of September. They're both gonna roast the separate batches. We're gonna ship them either way and you'll be able to buy them from 3FE uh, in Ireland or you'll be able to buy them from hasbeen.co.uk here. Um, if you go to the URL, uh, http double dot forward slash forward slash go dot hasbeen.co.uk forward slash collab. Um, and then you'll be able to pre-order this. It'll be sent out on the 26th. Um, it's gonna be fun, exciting, different. The honey will come in a 3FE bag, the natural will be coming in a has-been bag, and the two will come together. And I think it's lots of fun for the roasters, but also uh, a great way to launch these two amazing special coffees. And it's not really news, but we have some very special in my mugs coming up in the coming weeks. Uh, I'm going to be spoiling you big time, and I think you're really, really going to love what's coming up. And that was the amazing news. So we should get a move on, and we should do focus on. And this week, we're going to be focusing on Catimoras. That's the varietal of this week's coffee. So focus on, this week's coffee is a 100% Catimor, a controversial variety. Catimor is a cross between Timor, um, which is a, it's a, a robust, that's robusta kind of in its DNA, uh, but it's very resistant to leaf rust uh, and borer, um, and Katura. Uh, and Katura is uh, very, and we know Katura, we've seen it a lot on here. Um, it was created in the weirdest of places, Portugal, in 1959. Uh, it grows and produces fruit very, very quickly and has incredibly high yields. It's super pest resistant, super resistant to disease, in particular leaf rust, and will grow at much lower altitudes compared to many other, uh, many other varietal. Um, and all of these things make it sound perfect, but that Robusta in the Timor is definitely something that can affect the um, uh, can affect the cup quality, 
Um, you know, Robusta is known for not being particularly delicious and not being particularly tasty. Although Katura, the other part of it, definitely is known for being uh, incredibly delicious and incredibly tasty. Um, there's also other problems with it. So the other problem is the plant grows very quickly. Um, it produces fruit very quickly and it produces incredibly high yields. This in turn has a knock-on effect. This knock-on effect means that the plant gets tired much more quickly than uh, you would uh, expect it to. So the plants will last, for, like Bourbon varietals are well known to last for, oh, I've seen Bourbons of 100 years old. Um, whereas this one, is, it is known to be much more um, uh, 10 years and it starts to get tired and yields definitely start to drop. Um, so yeah, it's an interesting varietal. Uh, there's no such thing as a bad varietal. There's a, such a thing as a varietal planted in a bad place. Um, and what we're gonna find here that they can be amazing catimals. But that was focus on. So that was focus on. Um, this week's coffee, it's uh, one that we saw back in episode 300. It's in its fourth year with us. Um, and it's really sad because we have taken a little bit of a step back uh, in the traceability of this coffee that we've had over the three the previous three years but he also really highlights the issues facing producers at origin at the moment and there's some really big issues uh, but i'm going to take you back to the four years ago and the first time we came across this coffee it came into the roastery as a very well presented sample on the doorstep from somebody i'd never seen never met just said you should try this coffee uh, trying to help um, them find a buyer in the uk and we get loads of these coffees most of them are absolutely awful but they always find their way to the cupping table uh, because they're always worth finding because you find little gems like this this one was really quite different the quality was amazing um, so we said yeah we'd like to buy it and we bought 25 bags of it and they shipped all 25 bags in one container just a big empty container so we would have this coffee um, and ever since then I've kind of got closer to Alejandro um, I've been to see him lots and lots of times. I was there in January this year. He was here in London Coffee Festival this year. But also uh, he came to Stafford as well and we took him to Manchester to meet some of our customers. Um, and we've been really doing some experiments, some great projects together. He's become a really, really good friend and we're looking that he might be coming over again in uh, November to come and hang with us here at Has Been. Um, and I think that's really the most important part about this relationship. That we have a great friendship as well as buying this amazing coffee. Um, Ali took over the running of his, it's his father's farm and originally his grandfather's farm um, four years ago. Um, and, and having returned to El Salvador after a very successful and lucrative career in investment banking, um, he's incredibly well educated, he's incredibly intelligent, he's a businessman and he understood that if he wanted to sell, get more money for the coffee, they needed to step up the things they were doing on the farm. He's done lots of work on making the cup be better. Um, you know, he broke it up into separate tablons last year where we had Fincona one and we had uh, all of the different um, little plant, uh, the, what was it called? The uh, Los Mangos, amazing little subplots on there. Um, we had eight plots uh, on the farm, seven of them that we bought and, um, we've had to take a step back from that this year because there is so little crop. So I've talked about this a few times, but Roya leaf rust is it's a fungus that grows on the coffee plant, makes the leaves fall off um, and makes them unable to photosynthesis and do all of their funkiness and make the fruit ripen and uh, be delicious. Um, and it's just been a huge, huge problem there. Now, this is one of the varietals that has probably saved Ali because this hasn't gone down at all uh, because of its resistance to this rust, because uh, this varietal, but all of the other Bourbon that's on the farm has been hit terribly um, and really has caused masses and masses of problems. You know, lots of producers have lost 30, 40% of their crop this year. Ali's lost 90% of his crop. And the reason he's lost 90% of his crop is that the, um, the neighbours around haven't been looking after their plants. This has had a big effect on his harvest. Also, he did lots of pruning, he's done lots of replanting. He's ripped out lots of plant stock that wasn't performing well. Um, just at a time where his yield's been massively hit. He was already expected to be 40 to 50% down this year, but he's down 90%. Um, 
Uh, it's been so much of a problem. Ali's actually bought the farm next door now to try and control the rust there so he can have control over what's happening on Argentina. Um, so yeah, this is, as I've said, is the Catimor lot. It's a controversial coffee varietal, but this is one of the best examples I've ever seen of this varietal. Um, and I think it just goes to prove there's no such thing as this bad varietal. Um, lots of people harp on about it. It's about the, a, a bad place for a varietal, not necessarily um, a bad varietal. Um, it's only a very small plot on the farm. Um, and you may be wondering, because um, I know I would be, uh, why you're paying a little bit more for a Katora uh, than you would for a Bourbon. Well, I think this is simple. Um, when Ali goes and picks this coffee, he has to separate it. He has to have separate pickers, he has to keep it in separate sacks. When it gets to the mill, um, it has to be all separate. And if the truth be known, Ali would rather not harvest this coffee this way. He would rather just pick everything. It'd be called Finca Argentina. It would be about 5% would be Catimor. So you'd still call it a Bourbon, really. Um, it's hassle, it's fiddly, it's a pain in the backside. So this is our opportunity to, to reward Ali for actually picking this great small lot of coffee. Um, and what we've done is, you know, we pay the same price for it, but it's actually, it works out, we've sold the bulb on a little cheaper than really we should have this year, and this makes up for that, and it all balances out at the end, and Ali can get the great price that he deserves. And that's something we've been working on very closely with him, is to try and pay him more and more for the coffee. Um, I should tell you a little bit about the farm. So it's based in the Apeneca mountain range, uh, near to the town of Turin, uh, in the Arshapan department. Um, the farm itself employs 16 people full time, um, and they maintain the farm security. Um, th there's a lot of uh, uh, feeding of the plants that goes on. Um, during the picking season, that roasts around about 50 people. Um, so there's a lot more on there. Altitude of the farm is 1,350 metres above sea level. This is a washed coffee, uh, sun-dried on patios. So we should go through the numbers, I guess. So the country is El Salvador, of course. Uh, the farm is uh, Finca Argentina. Um, it is a Catimor varietal. It's fully washed and sun-dried. Uh, altitude of 1,300 to 1,350 metres above sea level. Owned by the Martinez family, in particular managed by Alejandro. Uh, nearest city is Turin in Arshapan in the Apodeca mountain region. And I think that is everything. <coughs> oh, coffee really hurts my back too. Um, so we should go and do Mr. Glue, tell us your daft fact of the week. Prior to 2011, El Salvador had its own currency. It was called the colon, but ever since they've been using the US dollar. Interesting, eh? Always interesting, Roland. You are a very, very interesting man. Okay, well, it's time for this week's map bit. this liveness i don't like the liveness let's go back to video it's much easier but here we are we're going up to blighty if you've watched an in my mug in the past and if you haven't welcome uh this is what we do we do the map bit um and we're going down to central america because obviously el salvador is in central america i bet you while we're doing this alejandro is going to be sitting next to me going he's gone all this wrong he's gone all this wrong because he does that a lot but let's go down to el salvador now you can see that i buy from a specific part of el salvador um but el salvador is known as the land of volcanoes and it has some of the most active volcanoes in the world there was an eruption around about 18 months ago very near to this farm um so we're going to zoom down and you can see this spine of farms and it really like this just kind of happens not by a plan it's just the coffees that we cup on the cupping table give us this great diversity so let's go down to argentina and these are the trees that you can see of argentina and where the where the actual flag is that is the farm that's the farmhouse um so we're going to zoom across now you see that little bear bit of land that's a geothermal testing site um, and we might get to see a little bit more of that there we go so you can see that that's a geothermal testing site where they use it for power 
So the highest point is Cerro El Pital at 2,730 metres. And the lowest point, of course, is the ocean, um, which I have paddled in with Alejandro in the past. He got to see my pasty white milk legs. But let's zoom in. So in the distance there, if you just see, that's Guatemala and San Sebastian. So that tells you kind of like, it gives you a rough idea of the geography. And there's the sea that I've paddled in with my pasty white legs. Um, but there's the farm. And there is just like an amazing view and an amazing, amazing map bit. A great map bit that we've seen a couple of weeks ago, but it's well worth seeing again to get a good idea of the typography of El Salvador. Um, so we should get back to the past. Well, back to the future. Back, no, back to the past. Definitely back to the past when I could walk and didn't feel quite as poorly and go and look at uh, tasting this week's delicious coffee. So we're back. Uh, we're back here in uh, Hermitage Road um, in, in Hitchin. In Hitchin. Um, and let's dive in and try the coffee. Dale's gonna, uh, actually Gary's gonna pull us a shot, aren't you? Yeah. Say hello to the camera, Gary. Hi there. Um, so we're gonna taste the, 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 the this week's in my mug and then we're gonna taste the shots of the Hermitage Road then. So let's dive in. So it's a little hot, a little oh, warm. Yeah, it is over this. So this is a this is unusual as it's a catamore. And catamore is a varietal that tends to be produced not so good coffee. But catamore grown in the right places can produce interesting cups like this. So by right places do you mean high altitude or low altitude? Just the right soil is for it. Ah, so place it so what happens is on, on Finger Argentina the soil's quite dry because they add lots of hot springs underneath it. Ah. Catamore grows well in dry soils. Okay. Um, but what it tends to give is a little bit of a spicy note. I'm not done if you're getting that, but a little yeah. bit of a black pepper kind of yeah. really kind of spicy, almost curry powder kind of yeah, taste to it. Absolutely. Mixed in with milk chocolate, which doesn't sound like a delicious combination, but mm. there's a sweetness and there's a spiciness that just kind of works well. There, there is. The, on your palate, it, it's hitting me as that shot of sweetness first, yeah. and then that pepperiness and that spiciness is lingering on my palate the end, right at the tip of my tongue. Perfect. It's like I primed you to do that, and I promise I didn't, but it really is. This it's is that, totally yeah, normal. It's just that really spicy kind of like, really, almost heat, but then yes. that sweetness and just all mixing together, it is delicious. It resonates really good. Can we grab some of the shots of the sure. Hermitage Rose Blend? So the Hermitage Rose Blend is currently 70% El Salvador Lafani, right. which is a farm not far from this one actually. Um, both of the farmers know each other because I've introduced them, and they've started working together a little closer. And then it's 30% of the Nicaraguan Limoncillo, which we're doing a talk on tonight. That's why I have my shirt on. Um, but yeah, so uh, it's the Port Natural uh, from, uh, from Limoncillo, which is in Ginatega in Nicaragua. Have your customers been enjoying the blend? They have been, very much so. Um, one of the great things about the blend is that it actually does challenge people's palates a little bit more, and it makes them think about what it is that they're drinking. So they, they are getting that lovely traditional full body um, espresso that, that, that they really sort of come to expect, but there's a nice lingering almost sort of sourness to it, and almost a fruitiness to it, that is really, really wonderful, and something that people have really on to. But if you look at the two components on their own, so the, the Lafani, um, oh, hello! <laughs> right We're to going. the camera! <laughs> <laughs> That's, there's no editing in my book either, so that stays. Um, so the Lafani is very sweet, very smooth, very chocolatey. A bit yeah. like this without the spiciness. Yeah. But then the Limoncillo has a little bit more acidity to it. It's a little bit more fruitiness that obviously yeah. comes through in the blend. So we're in Hitchin. How do people react to that in Hitchin? Because I, 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 I know here a little bit because I used to live in Luton many, many years ago. Ah, okay. So I know the area a little bit. Yeah. And it's not somewhere I was struck that would have a really like funky coffee shop like here. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. I think our customers are very much switched on to what's happening in coffee. Um, so they, they certainly come because, again, we, 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 we have a brilliant product. We challenge people's palates. And we like to talk about coffee as well. So we do find that, that people are really switched on to the product, actually. It, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's I guess you're in commuter land right. here a little bit, too. We so are. lots of people know the London coffee scene and what's happening there. Ab absolutely. And having moved here from London about three years ago, I'm actually finding people in fiction a lot more interested in the dialogue that comes along with coffee in the industry in general. People are really interested in it, and they're really interested in coming in and talking about it as well. I mean, it's a beautiful shop. You must come in and see the shop. Tell us how can the, yes. how, where can people find you? We are located at 2021 
Hermitage Road in Kitchen. We're about a 10 minute walk from the station and we're right around the corner from the lovely town center, which is beautiful and it's a very historical town. It's really lovely, we all love it. That's cool. No, that's really good. <laughs> so let's talk about your blend, because obviously this is the guest blend for this year, this, this mm -hmm. month in September. Yeah. Although we're not in September, we're kind of telling lies for the camera, but. Sorry. Um, for me, that sweetness is really prevalent. Like you yes. really, and it's thick and it's gloopy. The mouthfeel is really big on it too. Yes, it is. One of the, like what I love about this coffee is that I have been able to get people who normally take like three sugars in their coffee to have no sugar in their coffee because it's just wonderful to drink on its own. It does beautifully with milk. So if you want that sort of traditional cappuccino, lovely with a little sprinkle of chocolate, but to actually this actually just sings on its own. Well, it's got a really big body to it as well. It, it actually has a presence. So I can imagine when you add, add milk, it doesn't just disappear. We're not going to make Gary make us milk. No. Right? So we'll, we'll have those <laughs> no, 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 it doesn't. It doesn't. It really holds its own against uh, against milk, and it's it's just lovely and drinkable. At the moment, where like my favorite drink at the moment is um, is a portado double espresso macchiato, and with that sweetness from the well steamed milk, it's just it's like. Can you come on in my mug every week? Because it's great. I don't Aww. have to do any of the selling. It's awesome. I can just Aww. stand here and go, she's right, she's right. It, it is a delicious blend. Yeah. If you're not one of the subscribers, you should definitely go buy it off the site. Mm. It's going to be on for the whole of September. Um, if you don't make it, you're going to have to come in here and, and, and try it too. Come and visit Gary and I. Yes. Come and say hi. Say that you saw them on in my mug too, because that's always good for letting yeah. me come back again and do another one at some point in the future. Um, listen, thank you very much for hosting me today. Thank you very much for the coffee, Gary. Um, yeah, I think all that's left to say is life is definitely too short.